Welcome to the second of Interstellar's exclusive two-part video series dedicated to the recently organized DEFSAT 2023 conference and expo. As the coveted media partner of DEFSAT, Interstellar spoke to a cohort of diverse professionals who attended this significant gathering. Surprisingly enough, we met a man of law at the event. Kaushik Moitro, partner at the renowned firm Bharucha and Partners, explained his interest in attending. And this particular conference is just, it's just fantastic, right? I mean, it brings together people of diverse nature. They, first policy happens, then law happens, and then regulation happens. In terms of keeping pace, I think space policy in this country whether it is civilian or defense, it's very difficult to really delineate that. That said, I would really believe that it has not really kept pace at the pace that it should have. It's not all doom and gloom. I think it's something that is changing and events like these are a testimony to the fact that there is interest. The very fact that we have a policy is a strength in itself because this is something that we've been wanting, we've been advocating. As far as the weaknesses are concerned, I think the most important weakness still is that it does not address with specificity who is going to be the regulator and who is going to run the business. Number two, I think a little more uh, consultation must be, must be held which is more focused. For example, we need to figure out who is a space OEM and who is a space facility provider. We then turned our camera on Amay Belorkar, Senior Vice President of IDBI Capital Markets and Securities, who oversees the Maharashtra Aerospace and Defence Fund. He provided valuable insights into institutional financing of the space sector. So we have covered the entire spectrum of uh, Army, Navy, Air Force and Space Tech. In this fund specifically, Government of Maharashtra has significant contribution. So that is why it is Maharashtra Defence and Aerospace Venture Fund. So we can invest in the companies which will manufacture in Maharashtra. Uh, we also had uh, proposed a fund for All India Level uh, Defence Fund. So uh, in, in due course, very shortly, we will, will, you'll see that also. We invest in MSMEs. We feel that startup and MSME needs this, this kind of, uh, they are the most, uh, uh, they are the actually most uh, uh, needed uh, MSMEs or uh, companies who actually need the equity capital because they are at the innovation stage. Professor Dibbiendu Nandi is one of India's leading space weather scientists and a key person behind the team launching ISRO's Aditya mission. He was educating a new set of end users regarding the importance of space weather monitoring. Hopefully Aditya will be launched pretty soon in the next uh, few months. Um, so Aditya does have some capability of, of doing space weather monitoring and assessment, although not quite forecasting. Um, we are trying to use uh, some of the Aditya data products uh, towards moving it towards space weather data products. In fact, I chaired a committee uh, for ISRO which is trying to reinvent uh, how do we get the data from Aditya and, and create some space weather alerts and other, other data products which can be utilized for space weather forecasting. Uh, that exercise also gave us some lessons on what we need to do. Uh, you know, moving forward uh, to actually be more resilient in terms of space weather and creating our own um, uh, new space observatories which are focused on, on, on assessing and forecasting space weather. So Aditya I think is a good first test bed for testing some of our ideas um, and we have many other plans uh, moving forward for uh, and having a more holistic understanding of space through modeling, data analytics and putting up satellites up there. Professor turned space entrepreneur Oindrajit Chaudhuri, currently on Lien from IIT Bombay, spoke about the constructively changing dynamics at the academia industry interface. We can see that uh, industry is starting to understand that there needs to be quite a bit of research in some key areas. And uh, we have the know-how already kind of sitting in different uh, institutes across the country. And they're starting to reach out now. Uh, they're starting to get into consultancy agreements with uh, professors out of uh, IISC, out of IITs, out of NITs. And um, there are different people doing uh, different things across the spectrum. So very, very exciting time, very, very good seeding time. Uh, government has come out with a thought process that there should be these industry academia partnerships. 
also banking big on innovation in India are the big four consulting firms. Captain Vishal Kavar, heading PWC's Aerospace Defence and Space Vertical, spoke about the National Space Policy 2023, its implications and the opportunities it presents for the Indian space industry. If you look at space, I look at three broad areas where space benefits human mankind in India. There are economic benefits which are reaped by businesses, reached by larger tax collections for the government. There are social benefits, healthcare, education, agriculture. There are close to about 13 to 15 sectors where it impacts on the downstream. And then there are strategic benefits with whether it's military or other strategic areas like banking, insurance, uh, the financial hub uh, structure of the skeleton of the country, all those are strategic areas. So these three areas would reap the maximum benefit with this space policy and I think the policy is very well crafted but I think this policy would help us shape the strategic growth of the space industry and towards that I would say that as a country we should focus more on how we can build up the application, the downstream part earth observation, navigation, communication, how we can build that area for, for societal, economic and strategic benefits of the country. Leo Labs Australia provides tracking and analysis data for objects in space. Air Commodore Terry Van Haren gladly spoke to us about his interest in the event. Leo Labs is here, I suppose, to ensure that our space surveillance systems actually are becoming international and giving India the option of joining the party really to um, embrace really what is a unique commercial broad spectrum uh, surveillance system that's uh, designed really for space traffic management you know to avoid collisions and debris issues in, in low earth orbit and the other part of it is to uh, add transparency to irresponsible actions uh, threat behaviours and other things that are going on as well. So we're really trying to work with space-faring nations, those nations that actually are embracing this new space era, the uh, commercialisation of space, uh, the, the ability to use systems like that to bring transparency to space. And India is one of those uh, countries, you're moving into a new space era, it's time to embrace commercial and you'll get a lot of power out of it because um, with the, the methodologies that we use, we bring a lot of value for a very low cost. Interstellar was also fortunate that Major General Bishambar Dayal, a renowned commentator on national security affairs, took out time for us. He spoke candidly on the formidable threats confronting India and shed light on the pivotal role played by DEFSAT in enhancing the nation's strategic capabilities. Uh, the Army needs its satellites in a manner that it has uh, constant inputs on, on both the borders. Our borders are porous. We have got a huge border to guard. Human resources are running out of that sort of a that sort of a stamina, I would say. We got to be in space if we got to beat China one day. If we got to compete with China, if we got to defend ourselves against China, against the forces which are trying to destabilize India, then we got to dominate space. When it comes to a communist regime like China, or a closed regime like China, or a country which is so secretive, so closed, where movement of any any int source or any int agency, when normal int methods fail, I think the space, the, the space and, and, and other things like UAVs, etc., they assume a great significance, particularly in relation to China. I think, and on the Indo-Chinese border, we need a, a we need a, a, a completely space-based program. DEFSAT was truly a blessing for us. Ambassador Rakesh Sood, who had set up the Disarmament and International Security Affairs Division in the Ministry of External Affairs and is a global technology security expert, appreciated DEFSAT's contribution to India's overarching national security agenda in outer space. ISRO came into being in 1969. At that stage, there was very little application that our services were looking at in terms of space technology. Frankly, space started becoming a factor in the eyes of Indian services and the Indian Ministry of Defence only with the Kargil War of 1999. That's the first time that we saw the importance of satellite-based imagery and that kind of information. Then again in 2020 at Galwan, once again we saw the importance of both drone-based imagery as well as satellite-based imagery. And I think 
it is that realization that has brought the idea to all the three services as to the importance of ISR, as to the importance of satellite communication, as to the importance of PNT, the positioning, navigation, timing qualities, and all of that, because it is so relevant, not just to their communications, but also their target acquisitions, their ability to follow the battlefield and manage the battlefield. To sum up, DEFSAT attracted diverse professionals from various domains entrepreneurship, finance, law, diplomacy and academia. It is clear that through their diverse expertise and shared commitment, India will propel forward in the commercialization and operationalization of space technologies and services for civilian and military end users. Interstellar offers the latest analyses and updates on India's dynamic space sector. Follow us to gain valuable insights into cutting-edge advancements, transformative initiatives and meaningful discussions shaping the future of India's thriving space industry. Don't miss out on being a part of India's remarkable journey in space. Like, share and subscribe to our channel now for an unparalleled source of knowledge and inspiration.